All right, joining us uh, with someone who will end up having to vote one way or the other on the bill, Republican Congressman from Arkansas, Representative French Hill. Congressman Hill, thank you so much for joining us. Let's set aside the question for a moment of the specifics of the bill and what you think about what you've, uh, what's in it so far. Is it your view that on some level this is an economy that still could use um, fiscal stimulus or fiscal st support in some way? Well, Joe, thanks for having me. Let's focus on the fact that on December 27th, we passed $900 billion, nearly a trillion dollars of new money on top of the uh, three plus trillion that we passed earlier in 2020. That money is just now entering the economy at the time of the vaccine rolling out and the economy reopening and the economic statistics that your reporter just cited with growth outlook between five and a half and seven percent for the United States this year. So money is coming into the economy right now, along with this rapid vaccination attempt across the country. Is there a sense here, though, that addition, the, the fiscal money, the money that's in this bill here, is there any sense here that uh, if it is passed and it gets out there into the economy, that there would actually be some sort of negative snapback with regards to uh, growth, I guess, being a little bit too hot? You know, I'm not sure about that, but Larry Summers, who you quoted, former Treasury Secretary, says it's six times too much. The senators believe that, too, and they may well, over the next 24 or 48 hours, be able to better target this bill. In my view, the $1.9 trillion is not accountable to the taxpayers, not accountable to the mission, as only 9% is dedicated specifically to getting COVID, the virus killed, and getting the economy reopened. And so it's a broad wish list of policies that are not temporary and are too broad. And as Larry Summers says, approximately six times more than the economic output gap indicates for 2021. But Congressman Hill, let's take the other side of the argument yeah. coming from Janet Yellen that it would be a far worse thing to go too little than go too big, particularly with a Federal Reserve that is so committed to the, committed to the labor market, to bringing some sort of equality to ensure that those who have been left behind the previous recessions doesn't happen again. Right. What about that, ensuring that everyone, all sure. boats rise? Well, thank you very much for that. We have the Paycheck Protection Program extended unemployment benefits extended and that 10 million job gap is so much tied to executive travel meetings conferences live venues restaurants that how do we get that we could give people billions of dollars each but it wouldn't get them out into the travel into the restaurant into the live venue business until the virus is killed <clears throat> that's why i believe that getting the vaccine out getting americans vaccinated is the number one thing we can do at this stage of the economic recovery to go that final course and bring those 10 million people back into employment. I want to uh, pivot to another topic that uh, you considered recently, and that is some of the stuff going on in the stock market. Weirdly, once again, GameStop, the stock that actually inspired hearings on your committee, um, in surging again over the last couple of days. Does this episode, in your view, warrant any well, legislation, or is it just sort of a weird thing that we should keep watching and paying attention to? Well, when we have zero interest rates and we have trillions of uh, reserves flooded into the economy, you're going to have this immediate buoyancy of all as asset prices. You see it in commodities, you see it in real estate, home prices, you see it in stocks, and you create this periodic bubble activity in a given name. I think so that's what you saw in GameStop. When we went to the hearing, I took away that the equity market structure and plumbing worked pretty effectively, that Robinhood had some management, risk management practices that failed and were not ideal for their investors. Right. Uh, but I didn't take away a wholesale change of what we need to do in the securities market. When people talk about the idea of shortening the time to settlement uh, from T5 to something like, you know, basically same day settlement, uh, do you think that that would actually be something uh, you would support? Well, I think we're moving that way. You know, when I started in the securities businesses in the dark ages, it was T plus five, and we typed out each confirmation and called somebody to do the trade. We're at T2. We're going to go to T0. There's no doubt. I thought a of ours uh, op-ed in the Wall Street Journal today was quite good on this subject. But we need to make sure that we have the plumbing, the systems, the accounting, and the telecommunications and computer support to make that happen. But I do believe we're headed that direction. And perhaps blockchain will play a role in that as well. 
Good old blockchain. I mean, of course, as founder and, and CEO of Delta Trust and Banking, you're a man who understands the plumbing. And I'm interested in, it was, feels like an age ago, but I think it was only yesterday that the Federal Reserve's own systems collapsed to a certain extent in terms of payment systems. And is infrastructure investment needed from a federal level in this respect? Well, real-time payments uh, is well underway. So we see that in the private sector with the largest financial institutions pursue, uh, pursuing their real-time payment system. And the Federal Reserve is going to create a competing system, uh, a real-time payment system led by the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. But I don't expect to see that in the marketplace for three to four years. But real-time payments are coming. That'll ben benefit consumers. It'll benefit businesses. It'll be good for our economy. All right, Congressman, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us. Uh, that's Representative uh, French Hill, of course, uh, represents uh, Central Arkansas.